Sup, Chooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. Okay, I know this is not a typical subject for this channel, but several people have asked me to do a video on the recent announcement by the Health and Human Services Chief RFK Jr. and President Trump on the subject of acetaminophen, also known as Tylenol. I was meaning to do this video a bit earlier, so I don't know if anyone remembers this story anymore, but I was busy, you know how it is. So, to refresh your memories if you have forgotten, the claim was made that if pregnant women take Tylenol, their babies are more likely to have autism. Now, I don't really have a dog in this fight. There are plenty of drugs that women should not take during pregnancy, including 5-air blocking drugs like finasteride and dutasteride, as you all know I champion on this channel. In general, the fewer drugs pregnant women take, the better. On the other hand, Tylenol used to be about the only pain medication that doctors felt was relatively safe to use during pregnancy. Women can have many painful conditions during pregnancy, so if they can't take Tylenol, does that mean that there is really nothing at all they can take for the pain? Do they really have to just suck it up and deal with whatever painful condition they're experiencing, like morning sickness, migraine headaches, or chronic conditions like arthritis? Before people asked me about this, I had no idea what the evidence was linking Tylenol to autism, but I was still curious enough to do some research. I'm naturally very suspicious of RFK Jr. because he is not trained as a scientist and he has a bunch of weird medical opinions like demonizing seed oils, being against all vaccines, downplaying the risk of raw milk despite a recent disease outbreak in Florida, and even promoting the carnivore diet as healthy. All this leads me to believe that RFK Jr. isn't scientifically literate because he sounds like a crunchy mom who gets health advice from Facebook memes rather than actual scientific research. But that isn't to suggest that RFK Jr. doesn't have some some broken clock moments. He does have a few. He has promoted healthier school lunches for kids, and he has supported banning the use of food stamps to buy soft drinks, all of which I agree with 100%. So, full disclosure here, even though I may agree with him on one or two things, I despise RFK Jr., and I do hope that Trump fires him very soon. But this is a science-based YouTube channel, so I am not going to let my negative opinions towards RFK Jr. get in the way of taking an objective look at this Tylenol and autism data. I decided to look at all the evidence and analyze it for myself, just like I do for studies on hair loss treatments or any other subject I'm talking about on this channel. So first of all, autism is a relatively new diagnosis. Although it was first described back in the early part of the 20th century, it really didn't become a common diagnosis until the early 2000s. You can see in this Google engram, which looks at mentions of the word autism in books and articles, that the term really became widely used in the 2000s. I attended elementary school in the 1980s and high school in the 1990s, and I can tell you quite confidently that autism was almost never discussed at all. Like, if we were to ever hear someone talk about autism or even bring up the word, the common response would be, what is autism? Times have definitely changed, though. It looks like the number of cases of autism has been increasing. In the year 2000, one out of 150 kids were diagnosed with autism, but by the year 2022, that frequency had increased to one out of 31 kids. Some of that increase is likely due to increased recognition of the condition, as well as more accurate diagnostic criteria for diagnosing autism. But even taking that all into account, it's still very disturbing that the number of cases has increased so much, and it makes people think that there are other factors going on to cause this increase in autism. Autism is thought to be mostly a genetic problem, and dozens of genes have been identified that may lead to autism. But it might not be entirely genetic. There may be environmental causes involved too, and of course, RFK Jr. Has has made a career out of blaming autism on vaccines, despite the fact that the paper that this was based on was found to be fraudulent and was later retracted. Did that make RFK Jr. change his opinion? No, of course not, because he's an agenda-driven ideologue who filters out any information that doesn't confirm his biases. So I'm sure that eventually we're going to see RFK Jr.'s hand-picked committee of anti-vaccine quacks claim yet again that vaccines cause autism. He'll probably also end up blaming seed oils too. But in the meantime, RFK Jr. and Trump recently did a joint news conference where they blamed autism on acetaminophen. Well, surprisingly, there actually is some data linking mothers taking Tylenol to their babies getting neurological problems like autism or ADHD. So these warnings from RFK Jr. are not completely without merit like his claims about vaccine. However, that's not to suggest that RFK Jr. is actually right here. No, he's completely wrong. The data on Tylenol and childhood autism turns out to be a classic example of a correlation fallacy, meaning although there is a correlation between Tylenol use and autism, this correlation does not mean Tylenol actually causes autism. First of all, here's a typical example of a study that at first glance seems to show that mothers taking Tylenol are more likely to have babies with autism. 
This is a meta-analysis of seven different studies that included 132,738 mother and child pairs that were followed for a period of 3 to 11 years. The study found that the incidence of autism was 23% higher in the children of mothers who had taken Tylenol versus those who didn't. Here's another study that seems even more convincing. In the study, the blood from the umbilical cord at birth was analyzed for acetaminophen metabolites, and then the infants were followed up during childhood to see which ones developed neurological problems like ADHD or autism. There were 996 children in the study. The study found a positive association between the presence of acetaminophen metabolites in the umbilical cord blood and the development of both ADHD and autism spectrum disorder in these children. So these studies and some other studies that you'll find in the description below all look pretty convincing and make it look like mothers who take Tylenol are more likely to have autistic kids. So is RFK Jr. right after all? Well, RFK Jr. isn't actually capable of interpreting scientific research and neither are any of his staff. They have a political job, not a scientific one, so not surprisingly, he's completely wrong. We have newer data that RFK Jr. completely ignored that shows definitively that this association between maternal Tylenol use and autism does not mean that Tylenol causes autism, ADHD, or any other neurological problems in children. This study here is the most important study done on this question, and it was published just this year. RFK Jr. had access to it, but he ignored it because, again, he's driven by politics, not science. The study includes every single child born in Sweden between the years 1995 and 2019. That's possible because Sweden is a small country with a national health care service. So this study includes 2,489,721 children. The use of Tylenol during pregnancy was recorded in all the mothers, and as the children grew up, they were followed by the National Health Service and diagnosed with either autism, ADHD, or other intellectual disabilities by their doctors. So, here's a flowchart of the study population. The researchers felt that the previous studies linking maternal Tylenol use to childhood autism might have been flawed. Specifically, they say, quote, Confounding by indication may occur based on the reasons that acetaminophen was taken. For example, due to infection, fever, migraine, or pain from autoimmune disease. These indications for acetaminophen use may be risk factors for neurodevelopmental disorders and may thus result in spurious associations." Unquote. In other words, the medical problems that women have that cause them to take Tylenol are the actual causes of autism, not the Tylenol itself. So, to best assess this, the researchers looked at the siblings of each child because siblings have similar genetics and so therefore have similar risk for getting autism. So the key result of the study is shown here. If you look at the entire population of children, it looks like the mother taking Tylenol increases the risk of autism in the child, which is the top line of this graph. However, if you look at siblings, whether or not the mother took Tylenol had no effect on the incidence of autism, which is the second line. In fact, if you look at other pain medications, they all seem to make autism more common when looking at the overall population. However, if you look at siblings, none of these medications do, and in fact, aspirin may even have a protective effect. The same results were seen when looking at ADHD and intellectual disability as well. So it is clear from this that it is the medical problems that lead to women needing to take acetaminophen or other pain relievers during pregnancy that actually cause childhood autism, and it's not caused by the pain medications themselves. Taking pain medication during pregnancy is a sign of some other problems that is the true risk factor for autism. The pain medication is not the cause, it is the result. As the authors of the study put it, quote, results of the study indicate that the association between acetaminophen use during pregnancy and neurodevelopmental disorders is a non-causal association, unquote. The authors conclude by saying, quote, acetaminophen use during pregnancy was not associated with children's risk of autism, ADHD, or intellectual disability in sibling control analyses. This suggests that associations observed in models without sibling control may have been attributable to confounding, unquote. These results have been further confirmed in another similar study from Japan of 217,602 children. The study also found a weak association between Tylenol use and autism in ADHD. However, the association disappeared completely when a sibling analysis similar to the Swedish study was done. So, it's clear from the largest, most recent studies that the association between Tylenol and autism is due to the fact that women who take Tylenol during pregnancy have medical problems that predispose their infants to have autism and other neurological problems. I think it's okay to caution pregnant women to minimize or avoid medications as much as they possibly can, but the data doesn't support actually banning Tylenol for all pregnant women or blaming Tylenol for autism. However, like I said earlier, RFK Jr. is politically motivated, and part of his agenda 
agenda is to make the public distrustful of pharmaceuticals in general, since big pharma conspiracy theories are part of a broader culture war to divide the American public. I think this Tylenol fear-mongering is just a warm-up for RFK Jr., because his ultimate goal is to link vaccines to autism. There's literally no valid data supporting any link between vaccines and autism, but RFK Jr.'s hand-picked anti-vaccine committee will surely come up with some bogus anecdotal or completely fraudulent evidence to allow them to say pregnant women and infants shouldn't get vaccines, which is complete nonsense, of course. However, I think I'll hold off on analyzing that decision until it's actually made. Personally, I think Trump cannot stand RFK. Jr. So, my hope here is that he'll fire him before such a decision can actually be made. I got a lot of pushback when I did my video defending the COVID vaccine a few years ago, and for the record, I stand behind everything I said in that video 100%. But we're not just talking about the COVID vaccine anymore, Chooms. We're also talking about childhood vaccines like the mumps vaccine, measles and rubella vaccine, the chickenpox vaccine, and even the polio vaccine. RFK Jr. is threatening to bring America back to the era of the iron lung. These vaccines that RFK Jr. hates so much have been wildly successful in eliminating these horrible childhood diseases that can be fatal or crippling in many cases. This isn't just speculation either. We're already seeing a dramatic resurgence of measles in the country due to vaccine denialism spread on social media by idiots like RFK Jr. as well as other social media influencers who have politicized vaccines. Now, I know this is a hair loss channel, but some things just need to be called out, and I'll continue to do that. But hopefully, RFK Jr.'s time as the head of the HHS is numbered. Donald Trump takes great pride in his Project Warp Speed initiative, which greatly accelerated the development of the COVID vaccine back when the virus was at its most deadly. So even though I've been critical of Donald Trump on this channel before, I think he showed tremendous leadership during that point of his administration. It was definitely a high point of his presidency. So I don't believe he actually agrees with RFK Jr.'s bullshit about vaccine. But you have to keep in mind, Trump was desperate to win the election in 2024 because he knew that if he lost the election, he was probably going to go to jail. So in desperation to win, he offered RFK Jr. the political power he wanted in exchange for his endorsement. Trump doesn't need RFK Jr. anymore, though, so I am hoping he does the right thing and tells RFK Jr. to go piss up a rope and fires him. All right, Jones, that is it for now. I'll be back with some more preem content soon, so thank you so much for watching. God bless.